Hey guys, um, sorry about uh, my, uh, my being late. Um, so let's, let's start the Facebook Live today. Um, so let me just put this on and we'll start shortly. See if I can see the screen okay. All right, let's, everything is good. Okay, let me get my microphone. Everybody see me okay, all right. Okay, so um, so today I'm gonna continue to talk about the um, um, the uh, the post processing. The the one big mistake is uh, yes, uh, last time I um, uh, <laughs> the, the screen was flipped, and uh, so I want to kind of uh, go through it again uh, with the the, the correct screen. And um, anyways, um, so so let's let's begin. So. Um, so last, a lot of a lot of you actually. Um, so I, I did the uh, the survey, and uh, a lot of you gave me really really good answers about uh, the challenges of uh, uh, on wildlife photography. And uh, one of the questions that I got uh, the most is um, um, is is this this gap that we talked about uh, last time, which is uh, uh, <laughs> is kind of interesting. The question is, people didn't ask me what is the the best way to edit a photo. Everybody asks me, hey, Tin Man, what is the easiest and fastest method to edit a photo? So this question is very interesting because uh, it means that nobody really enjoy the process of editing. It's always like, okay, I got all these raw photos uh, back uh, from, uh, from my photo trip. And how did I, uh, uh, how do I turn them into something in JPEG format uh, so that I can submit to photo contest, uh, share on, on the internet, or uh, create a, a TIFF file so that I can do a big print, for example, right? So nobody want to do that. And, and the main reason is, uh, first of all, it is uh, very technical, right? It is, it's kind of boring. Like all the photographers, uh, we enjoy the creativity process, the, the creative process, like right, going out to take photos, but nobody want to sit in front of the computer to do all this curve adjustment, right? Anybody here enjoy curve adjustments <laughs> or, you know, um, um, color correction, right? They put this um, color correction thing on the, um, on the screen and then they do all these minor color corrections. So there's no like magenta cast, right? <laughs> For example, like those, right? We all hate that. And nobody really understand it. Right? Even, even though if you post it on some of the forums online, you, you always get attacked that you have certain color cast, right? And I myself was also very bothered by, uh, uh, by, oops, uh, the screen. Uh, by 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 this because I I never knew what is the correct way to do the um, um, uh, the colors and all so uh, so that's why last time I mentioned about uh, I I started this quest to find the perfect parameters for for sharpening for color correction for uh, contrast uh, highlight shadow noise removal all these things and then I met my good friend Carl in one of the trips right and he he actually spent years collecting all the best uh, editing techniques from the top photographers of the world. <laughs> like he went to meet with um, this uh, wildlife photographer of the year, grand prize winners and uh, National Geographic people. And he, he compiled a, a little notebook. And I was very fortunate because uh, he asked me my opinion on that. So I, I got to learn all this. So, so in, in a very, very short time, I was able to uh, learn and master all these parameters. But the problem is that when I apply this method, uh, I, I mentioned to you guys, right? So, uh, so this time I think the screen is flipped. Okay, so so the uh, the the uh, the, the rep uh, response I got from people is that you you are so good in Photoshop. <laughs> this is not a comment that you want from people looking at your photos, right? Because um, you want your photos to move people, right? You want people to say that, oh my God, I, I was, I, I'm so attracted uh, by your image that I have to look into the animal's eyes, for example, and I, and I was deeply moved by this photo, right? So, so uh, this is the second response. Right, 
So this is one, this is two, right? You are so good in Photoshop. And two is I'm deeply moved. Like I can't stop looking at the animal's eyes, for example, right? So which one, which one would you uh, prefer, right? And uh, if you choose two, then why are we always uh, learning all the best techniques and follow everybody's routines to get so good in Photoshop so that the photo is the sharpest and the, um, and the best uh, with the most accurate color correction and all. And, uh, uh, but I want to add that uh, it is not about, uh, uh, you, you may ask me like, hey, hey Tim Man, so you, you don't think we should learn the best sharpening techniques, right? And, and my answer is uh, uh, absolutely yes, you have to learn the best, the ultra sharpening techniques that you can, you can get. But the problem is after you learn the sharpening techniques, you don't apply it to the whole animal, for example. You, once you have this, this technique, you, you have to think about how to maneuver these powerful techniques to help your image so that when people look at your image, they give you the second response, right? So, so I gave you guys the example last time, right? And, uh, and the example is um, on, on, this, uh, on this image right here, on this photo right here. Uh, this is the moment that uh, I waited uh, in the field for a few hours. The, um, uh, the cubs were sleeping. Uh, and the mother were, were, I think, maybe 30 feet away from them. And all of a sudden, this, this little cub started to, 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 uh, to, to wake up. And, uh, and he or she was looking around and it started like sitting up. And within a few seconds, this mother immediately saw her. And so the mother, mother bear just walked closer and closer to the bear. And at first I thought she was just walking close, right? But turn turned out that like, this is another lesson for a photographer. So a lot of us in the in the group, um, they were all just relaxing because the, the mother bear has been sleeping for the whole time, right? So they were just chatting and talking and all. But but for me, when I'm in the field, I never talk to people. Um, you may think I'm weird <laughs> that I don't chit chat and all, but I mean, you spend all this time and money to go to a trip. You always observe the animals, right? So I was always uh, in front of my viewfinder, and then I was looking at the behaviors. So when the when the mother bear were walking close, everybody was trying to get get up and get to their tripod and 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 try to aim. But I was already on the on the mother's head, so I was just following and following. And right before uh, it get close, I started to shoot. I started to click on the shutter because uh, another lesson to you guys is no one is gonna tell you when you click the shutter in nature and it's not, never gonna repeat again. So what you do is you have to trust your instinct. You knew that, okay, this mother bear is walking closer to the cub. And uh, if, if they're not doing anything, that is fine. But I right now, what I have is a digital camera that has, what, 128 gigabyte of space in it, right? Where it can take 12 frames or some of the new cameras, 20 frames per second, right? So what are you waiting for? <laughs> so in those moments, what you do is um, when, when it almost got to this point, you started to shoot. <laughs> but when, when do you start? Because you also have to think about the buffer, right? But you kind of knew if you look at their uh, body language, you, know, you knew that something is going to happen. And don't hesitate. Start to shoot maybe half a second before that happens, right? And, and lo and behold, right, uh, this, this mother uh, suddenly used the nose to touch the, 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 the baby and the baby actually uh, uh, licked on the mother's nose. Right? If, uh, here you can see it very, uh, here you can't really see it clearly. Um, but if you look carefully, you can see um, her little pink tongue was sticking out. And then this mother immediately do something, which is uh, she's opening the mouth. Um, uh, like it's almost like she's so happy as you can see right so this whole thing just lasted for probably two tenths of a second and it is the only thing that happened in that three or four hours we were waiting for the bears right so so that's one thing that I want to tell you is uh, always focus on the animals I mean you can always talk to the other friends during dinners or or, or we, we don't really have dinner for wildlife photographers, right? <laughs> I mean, even in the downtime when you're in the airport and stuff, but when you're in the field, uh, just focus on, on that. And, and think about if you miss this shot, right? And then you, all you get is just the, the, the bear sleeping in the tall grass, right? Then you'll be so sad, right? But anyways, <clears throat> so what I want to tell you is, um, so after you got this photo, right? 
when you go home, uh, you look at the raw file, and and most of the time the raw file is doesn't look like this. Doesn't look like this. I mean, the color is off because you always select uh, auto white balance, and the, and the color is not. It's only the the best estimate for the cameras. And and also I mentioned to you guys about uh, the raw file and the and the JPEG is that uh, the raw file has twelve bits, meaning that it has uh, four more bits uh, than the information of a JPEG file. And um, and so with this four extra bit, it it means that all the color, all the uh, all the things, the graduation is much smoother than if you have taken a JPEG file. But the problem is um, our screen, right? Uh, uh, if you look into the uh, the computer screen, the computer screen can only show certain bit of color. It cannot show the whole twelve bit of TIFF. So when you look at your computer monitor, what you are looking at is not really what you saw in that day, but Something that the computer try, uh, computer tries to recreate uh, based on the, the data information. So the color will be off, the, the sharpness will be off, everything will be off because uh, the sharpness inside the camera is not optimized for our visual reaction. Like we really have to perform certain uh, uh, Photoshop or editing techniques to bring out this potential, to bring out these details for 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 human really like it's it's almost like this is the machine files right but for human to interpret it you always have to work on it to create something that you saw that day right so uh, so okay so we got the raw file and and how do we do so a lot of um, a lot of us would do the the thing that all the gurus were saying right you go to the light room you have all these sliders right like the contrast slider the temperature slider so you just like like put it left and right and then see which one is uh, is is good right so oh by the way uh, please uh, if you have any questions um, uh, write down in the comments uh, i'll check it at the end of the the talk so that i can answer your questions and and don't hesitate to type if you feel like you you have something that you don't understand because this will really help me to uh, improve next time on that so uh, so so go ahead whatever you feel like and uh, and and if you really <laughs> enjoy the moment click like and and give me a heart too i really enjoyed it right so so anyway so to so get back to to this one right um, um a lot of you would do all these sliders on some more advanced uh photographers you you uh go into photoshop right and then you do the uh, uh delineation right this is what, what you call just kind of uh uh, draw the uh, draw the boundaries of the animals and create a new layer, and then you only sharpen the animal, right? But uh, as, as I mentioned to you, um, this is all not good because what I want you to do is really just to always ask you ask one question when you do editing: uh, Is your does it help lead the eyes of the viewers? To the Hulk. So this whole image, um, uh, what where is the Hulk? Right? Some of you uh, tell me, right? Like if you show people this photo, right? or, or if you just encounter this moment in the wilderness, and uh, you want to tell people, I right, guess what happened, right? The mother and the uh, the, the baby kiss on the mother's nose, right? So you already knew what is the Hulk of the image, and this is this area is what you want. Uh, this area is what you want people to look at, right? So in Photoshop, you don't just blindly apply sharpness, uh, improvement, uh, noise removal, color adjustment, and everything to make the image perfect. But everything you do have to have a reason. And the reason is that is what you are doing help the viewer's eyes to move, right? Because what I told you is when people look at the image, at first they render around, they don't know, they don't know what to look at, and then they will look, start to look into the lower left side, always. And then, so you have to create some tendency, or, or what, not, not what tendency, but then some tension, so that mm, their eyes know, oh, where should I look at? Okay, uh, maybe uh, I can uh, look into the brighter area, or maybe I can look, look at the sharper area, right? And so your editing is really to reverse the process to help the people to look at it. So I gave you one example that a lot of people like, right? So if you look into this image and uh, you apply sharpness onto this image, and a lot of you will tell you that, a lot of gurus will tell you that, okay, so you just um, uh, highlight, uh, you, you select the, the, the bear, mother, and the baby and create a new layer, and then you sharpen um, this, the animal and don't sharpen the background, right? 
but this doesn't help this the end goal of this what is the, the end goal of this the end goal is number one oh the bears look so sharp right not good so what you really really want is to create a difference in the sharpness of the image like and and it has to be gradual so that the sharpness of the head gotta be sharper than the body the sharpness of the nose and the ear and the mouth gotta be sharper than the head and the, the, the sharpness of the eyes or the nose is got to be sharper than any other part. And if you can create this kind of what I call the, uh, the tension, um, uh, and it's, it must be very, very subtle, like in each grad gradation has to be very subtle, then people couldn't help. They, they would, would not be able to tell you why. They can just tell you that, Tim, I don't know why, but when I look at your photo, I can't stop looking at uh, where the, the bear was, uh, the, bear, the cub was kissing on the, on, the, on the mother's nose, right? Because you use this uh, sharpness tension to help lead the eyes to, to that point, right? So that's what I really want to, uh, want to tell you. So you always have to be, uh, to be subtle. And some of you like the idea that you, you see a lot of photographers, what they do is they in, increase the saturation and the vibrance so much that the image almost doesn't look real anymore. Like the, the greens will be so yellowish and so saturated and you want to puke instead of enjoying the photo. But from the first glance, the photo looked almost like the, uh, the old Fuji, Fuji Velvia. It's very saturated color. So, so some of the newbies will think, oh, this looks so, so professional. So, so the color is so vibrant, right? But this is not really what, what you want. So, so stop doing that. But stop, start to look into this, this thing. And, um, and so I mentioned to you guys that, um, so first of all, um, you have to, um, so this is the raw file, right? the 12-bit the raw file. And what you do first is to um, find out the hook of the image, right? So, so try to um, uh, train yourself, right? Go back to all your photos, your favorite photos, for example. Pick the 10 best photos of yours and ask yourself, what is the hook of the photo? Like, what, what do I want people's eyes to move to, right? And then you look at the image and then you, you ask yourself several questions, right? I mentioned to you, you always have to use the human psychology um, uh, that is imprinted in our brain for thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, right? Which is what? There are basically four things, right? The first thing is our eyes love to, uh, like imagine you're walking in a dark alley, right? You always look for the light, right? Why? Because or you, you want to look for a face with the light, right? Because you, uh, back in the days, right? You don't want to be killed by a tiger or a lion when you walk in the dark, right? So this thing is always in our mind. So, so our tendency, and even now, where right, you walk in the dark alley, you don't want to get uh, uh, marked, right? So, uh, so you always want to look for the bright part. So, so the first thing you want to look for is, uh, is there anything that I can uh, uh, darken and brighten, which is what, what the traditional uh, dodge and burn uh, method that people use. But the dodge and burn method, what people have been using is, oh, okay, let, for example, look at this photo, right? Oh, this, the, the, the lake at the front uh, lake of the mother is kind of shadowy, right? Let me open the shadow right here, right? So that the picture has more details, right? That's what, what experts will tell you, what the gurus will tell you, right? But, but when you open the shadow of the lake, what, what, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is people is going to look at the lake instead of the, the hook, right? So this is actually a no-no, right? So you have to know where to do the dodge and burn, right? So for example, one small hint to you is you can brighten, uh, of course, the hook, right? And then darken the surroundings, right? But how much to do is you have to be very subtle and you have to also create this gradual idea too, right? So this is uh, the new thing that I taught you today uh, that I didn't mention uh, last time. And the second one, right, that we just talk about is the, uh, the sharpen, right? Because um, human behavior too, right? When you, see some, when, when you see a place where there's nothing, right? You always want to s search for something, right? And sharpness is really to create more information in the image, right? If you sharpen an image, right? You see more details in it. And if you uh, do a noise removal of the surrounding, you kind of get rid of a lot of the information in that, right? So for what happened to the eyes is that you started to look from the background to the hook, right? But what the gurus, right, in the traditional books and forums taught you is, oh, uh, remove the noise in the surrounding and uh, sharpen the animal. But this is kind of like, they understand part of the, the reason, but they didn't understand the overall goal of, uh, of, of this thing, right? Does it 
help lead the eyes to the hook. This should be your question that you have to recite every single morning, right? Not only during your photo uh, taking process in the field, right? Because you also have to think about that, right? When you compose a photo, for example, in the field, right? You always have to ask myself, is there any hints, any leading lines and any anything that makes the image more attractive to for people to look into the hook, right? That's the first thing when you're in the field. But during the editing process, uh, and 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 probably none of you is gonna teach you this thing in in editing and uh, and uh, and because it's just some of the random ideas that I think of in the field, but it has served me well. <laughs> so always ask this question. So the second one is uh, uh, sharpen, right? And then the, what is the 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 third thing that I taught you about? Also human psychology. Uh, if somewhere is very cold, right? We always want to find a warmer place, right? So and and what what does it? Trans translate to the to the image editing right here is that all the colors uh, as you know we do color temperature uh, in the uh, in the white balance right that, that's what 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 you do when you set all the white balance and uh, fluorescent or whatever it's all about the color always have a temperature right and uh, and and so humans always want to look at something that has a colder color and then they want their eyes to move to the warmer colors and and Van Gogh is uh, one of the experts who knows how to use uh, hot and cold color to lead your eyes, right? You always have uh, the complementary color uh, between the two so that your eyes have to kind of flip flop like like, like zigzags, right? Not flip flop, zigzag towards the the, the 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 place, right? Such as the starry night and and the um, and that that painting with the cafe cafeteria and and then the night and the and all the colors, right? Just look back in some of his photos and you know. So so the um, the cold to hot uh, is another one and um, and actually there are uh, nine others right but uh, of course I'm, I'm gonna uh, tell you more in in the future classes but I think one of the good thing for you to train yourself is also to uh, kind of uh, uh, sit back uh, at home and uh, think about it I mean kind of like a challenge for you guys is to think about uh, what really can uh, attract uh, people to uh, to the to the leading 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 point lead the hook right and also when you do all these things right what what I mentioned to you is the the yin and yang example uh, and some of you have used the noise cancelling earphones right so uh, so without the noise uh, 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 noise cancelling earphone if the the surrounding is too noisy right I gave you the example of the Starbucks and uh, if it's too noisy uh, you tend to um, turn up the volume right but but what is even better is if you have a way to lower down the surrounding noise, like right? what the noise cancelling earphone is, right? You all can remember the moment, right, when you put in this uh, uh, Apple AirPod uh, uh, Pro or, or some Bose or whatever brands uh, noise cancelling earphone. You put it in your ear, and once you turn it on, right, and for Apple it's automatic, right? You put it on, and the whole world suddenly is so quiet, right? And then you can hear every little ounce of the. Uh, the uh, uh, the music right or the uh, like all the subtlety of that right so instead of just pushing the volume right what we want to do is to create this gradient it's a harmonic gradient that looks so natural but the power is so much more powerful than trying to boost the volume of your uh, your of your 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 music player or or, or whatever right uh, lower the surrounding noise which is exactly like this right. Uh, get rid of the noise of the surrounding, but create a gradual level to lead to the eyes, uh, lead, lead to the hook, and that is just so powerful. Because one of the thing, one of the things that is important is uh, you can, you should never tell people what to do. Right? Do you want me to order you to do something? Like, hey, uh, 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 get a get a uh, bottle of Diet Coke for me, right? Like, you you don't want to be ordered. Hey, wash the dishes for me, right? Um, but well, this is kind of a weird example. But but like if you can create something that is so natural, uh, people couldn't help but do it, and it becomes their own way. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me let me uh, uh, let me uh, kind of paraphrase for you, right? So for example, if you uh, 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 watch a movie, for example, and um, and sometimes the director will give you the hint here and there and the hint here and there and uh, and so in the movie uh, the main character didn't know who is the bad guy right but from some of the hints in the movie 
it kind of already hinted to the audience that hey that is a bad guy like if the good guy go into that room he may get killed by the bad guy right so when the when the guy is trying to go into the room you kind of yell it like don't go don't go this this is a bad guy right and then once he get in he really got attacked and then you know like see i knew it i knew that's a bad guy even though the director didn't mention to me that he that that person is a bad guy but but i knew it because from all the storyline i already knew it i swear to god it's not the director who told me that it is it is that i got it i realized that i'm smart <laughs> they want it to be their own they want to kind of co-create they want to be part of the story so that's why it is so important not to have something that is obvious to the to the like like you're so good in photoshop this is a painful lesson you can never add certain uh, in, uh, add certain amount of editing in the slider that it becomes so obvious that they can see it and uh, and instead you create all this hint uh, almost like a, a screenplay a director so that you, you you look at this image right you kind of look okay uh, I look at it, Tin Man, uh, the green is not that green, right? Usually these uh, gurus will slide the yellow slider to make it super green, right? And and they will open the, the leg, right? This, there's no, no details in, in here, right? Tin Man, you suck, right? You don't know what you're doing, right? But the problem is when you show it to anybody who is not an editing guru, they will say, this photo really moved me, Tin Man. I can't stop looking at uh, the cup kissing on, 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 on the mother's nose. And, and, and tell me, which one do you prefer? Do you want, to, want people to tell you that uh, there's not, sh not no, sh no sh shadow details here, right? Edit it. And oh, there's a color cast in, in this one. It's not accurate, right? Like, like correct it. This is bad, right? Or you want to make people to cry when you, they look at your photos, right? So, um, so what else do I need to... Uh, to talk about um, so uh, you may say okay Tin Man uh, um, no matter how, how much you, you talk about um, this approach right does it help lead the eyes right but the problem is uh, I mean I have a family I have a full-time job uh, <laughs> I mean uh, after I come back from a trip I mean I don't have time like every time I open my Photoshop and uh, and I do the editing uh, I <laughs> okay, um, so uh, you, you, you say, uh, I just look at one of the comments and I'll get back to you guys. Uh, so you, you, you don't have time, that's a problem, right? Like, um, I can tell you my, my experience uh, when I, and the, one of the reasons I, I, I thought of this method is uh, one year um, uh, after I won the uh, Nature's Best photography, right, uh, the grand prize, I got invited to do a solo exhibit in Hong Kong, 50 photos. Um, each one is uh, 24 by 36 and then uh, five of them I have to do a uh, five to six feet uh, big print. Can you imagine the work like when you are a single entity, you are one person, when you have to edit 50 photos um, to print that big, right? Like, back in the days i'm already pretty good i i can do it pretty quickly so maybe one photo i i can spend 40 minutes uh or 30 to 40 minutes to edit one photo but 50 photos <laughs> if you think about it and once i finish everything and submit to them and when they print the first print something is off they said oh um you sharpen too much for example um you have to go back and I spend another 50 hours to, to, to oh, of course I didn't spend another 50, but, but I have to spend a few hours to send them some new, new tests and then I have to redo everything, you know, all this crazy stuff. But this method, um, any, anybody, well, of course you guys are smart, right? Have you heard about the 80-20 rules, right? So, uh, the, oh, you can even, oh, you can still see it, right? So the 80-20 rule means that um, um, actually in, in live, right? If you focus on the 20 most essential things, uh, then, then you actually can take care of 80% of the work. Is, is, that, is that what it means, right? But anyways, um, all these gurus, right? I mean, uh, if you bought a book by uh, Scott Kelby, right? The Lightroom and Photoshop. I mean, I love that book. It's really, really informative, right? But they didn't teach you like which step to use and what kind of parameters and what is the optimal value for wildlife photography, right? Because for wildlife, it's very different. For wildlife, most of the time it's one or two hook. But for landscapes, right? Sometimes you want to create a three-dimensional, you want all the leading light, you want all the details, right? So the approach is very different. All kinds of photography has different reasons, right? 
And for wildlife photography, for me at least, uh, it is to move people because I was deeply moved by that moment, right? And I want people to look at certain emotion in the animal that can move people. And so you have to use all your methods to drive the eyes to the viewers as quickly as possible. And, um, and so what I want to say is here, so you basically look at this image, for example, I, I, I tell you here, right? So first of all, you said, okay, um, uh, sharpness, uh, I, I need to do the, the sharpening, right? That, that is for sure, right? And the second thing is uh, you look into the, the hot and cold criteria here, and you say, is there any cold color, any hot color that I can address, right? If, I mean, if the photo is, is, is not, I mean, if, if the photo is a black and white, for example, well, you can still do filter and, and do a lot of those stuff. But anyways, what I mean by that is uh, you don't need to follow a pre-written script to do editing. Everything is flexible for you. Like if you think about all these uh, different criteria and if you can find some information in the image where you can apply those, then go ahead and apply. And if not, there is really no point. I mean, like for example, like, do you need to open up the, the, the shadow of the lake? Like you don't, right? And do you need to uh, sharpen this part? You don't, right? So, so a lot of the, the thing, like, do you really need to um, perfectly find out the, the color cast of, of this part? You don't, right? Because why? Because all you want is to find the hot and cold. All you want to create is this uh, gradual tension, right? What I call is tension stacking, right? Of course, the, the, as many as you can find the different kind of tension, and then once you stack them, then you can create um, this ultimate uh, uh, sharpness thing. And uh, I was talking to one of you guys. Uh, let me just check on the time. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, almost time times. Right. So so uh, one one of you asked me like, uh, okay, uh, so if you do this uh, sharpening thing, right? Um, uh, uh, like he, he was telling me how he enjoyed my 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 class last time. And uh, one of the techniques that I didn't really mention is you always have to think about how human perceive your photos, right? So, uh, for example, we all have uh, objections, right? For example, if you, uh, uh, you want to buy an expensive car, right? You have to talk to your spouse and uh, say, hey, <laughs> uh, how to justify your car? Because it's going to be uh, a lot of obstacles on that, right? So for, for these photos, what you don't want people to do is uh, you have done a lot of sharpening, right? But at the same time, you also want people to utilize your sharpening gradient to drive to the hook, right? So how do you do it? So one of the little techniques that I, that I love to play, which is what I derived from, from what Da Vinci was talking about when he analyzed the anatomy of the eyes is, so when you sharpen this part of the face and all, right? Uh, sometimes I would over sharpen the eyes. And, uh, and when you over sharpen the eyes, right? The, sh the eyes become very like crystal clear, right? It's very beautiful and all. But at the same time, when people look at your photos, uh, they immediately will try to look at the surrounding of the eyes to say, this guy, Tin Man, I know he must be doing too much over sharpening in, in the eyes, right? So what you do is that you actually decrease the sharpness surrounding the eyes so that when people have this doubt, right? When they want to object to your, to your first response, you're so good in Photoshop, right? You actually reduce the sharpness of the eyes and, and that will confuse the people completely. And they will say, God, I'm telling you, Telling you guys too much, right? So what they would do is, oh my God, the eyes is so sharp, so crystal clear. Uh, he must be doing some editing on that, extra editing, too over sharpen, right? And then they look surrounding the eyes, but they didn't see any artifacts. So usually when you over sharpen, right, you see these halos and stuff like that, right? And and you remove all this because it's not even sharpened. And then they look and they say, oh, maybe the eyes is just really crystal clear. Maybe it's not any sharpening. The image is just amazing. That's, that's the only reason. This is the magic. That's, that's what, what it is. That's the only explanation, right? So this is just one thing that when you think deeper into the human psychology and when you apply this and when you see that it works, uh, it, it helps, right? And I mean, nobody has talked to me that my photo is over sharpened, right? But they always uh, was able to, to drive the eyes to, to that, right? So, so that's, uh, again, uh, my... Uh, my part two of that and uh, and so oh so the 80 20 rule so after I apply this and I think about what is essential to edit the photo right now every single photo that I post online like you can see it in instagram.tinman slash tinmanly I mean instagram.com slash tinmanly sorry uh, or uh, my Facebook page right here and, and all, all these outlets right uh, or 
any big print. For example, uh, when I sell, I, I just recently sold a print, uh, uh, 18 by 18 by 24, um, uh, a bison photo uh, to uh, uh, one of my buyers. And uh, so big print, right? I have to send uh, to a printing company for this big acrylic print, right? So guess how, how long do I, did I take to edit each of those photos? The answer is this, four minutes. Yeah, that's it. So I, I never spend more than five minutes to edit any of my photos. And, um, and of course it, it takes practice too, but, um, but with this method, it's just so enjoyable. First of all, right? You suddenly have all this creativity in it. And the second thing is it saved me so much time. The four minutes, right? If I have an exhibit for 50 photos, right? You ask me to redo everything. This is fine. I mean, it just take me two hours to get it all done, right? So, so, so this is really much, much better. I have a much better life now than when before, right? I have to follow all this, what the guru taught me, right? 20, 30 steps, right? Each step I have to do this and then I have to fine tune the selection, the magic lasso and all these things, right? So it's too much. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you enjoyed it, please, please leave a comment below on, like, tell me which one you enjoy the most. And uh, let me now get back to the um, questions. Yeah, oh, thank you, Barry, for uh, telling me that. Okay. Uh, oh, so Morton, uh, oh, thank, Thanks for, I, I've seen you uh, the previous times too, and thank you for coming. So, very important on that. So, at, I, I tell you, I gotta tell you, I was very disappointed uh, in the beginning when I look at my raw files too. They, they didn't look uh, exceptional at all. And, uh, but then the thing is, um, you pay, what, uh, at least a thousand dollars for your camera, right? And uh, basically, what, uh, what the JPEG is, is really uh, the camera, uh, took a, took uh, took an image and then they just convert it into JPEG and then save it and then get rid of a lot of the information. So you're basically asking the camera to throw away 20 megabyte of information to give you a one megabyte JPEG file when actually you your image file has 21 megapixel of great information that you can retrieve, you can play with it, you can allow your creativity to flow to, to take all, all this back in. So I tell you, uh, some of the uh, very boring photos uh, that I took in the beginning, some just animal portrait, right? But with this method, uh, like, you can go to my Instagram and look at some of the animal portrait photos that I, that I took. And if you, it hooks you, if, if you couldn't stop looking into the eyes, you know that I actually did something on this. <laughs> and, uh, and you may not know, notice it before, but now that I mentioned it to you, uh, you can analyze the, uh, the change in, in all this, uh, uh, what I call the uh, dynamic tension stacking. So the, it's all very dynamic, right? You, 80, 20 uh, tension and how, how I stack it, okay? So, so I hope this, this talk inspire you to try more on the raw. And okay, hey, nice to meet you, Peter, Kev. Hey, all right. Okay. So, so I see that David, you are here too. So I hope that today's talk helped you to, uh, to think more on that. And, um, and thank you so much for watching this. If you are watching it live, uh, thank you so much. And if you're watching the replay, uh, also please enjoy it and don't hesitate to uh, write on in the comment, uh, what you think and what you want me to talk about in the future. And if I have anything that I didn't explain uh, clearly, uh, let me know too. And I'll see you guys next time.